One of the most challenging issues on mini farms is high pH soil. Today we want to talk about how you can fix your high pH soil. But before we get into that, we've got to talk about how did the pH get high in the first place? What went wrong out there? pH is really an indication of balance in your soil. If you've got one nutrient that's way out of balance, way too much of or not near enough of, you're going to see that pH fluctuating either to the low end or to the high end. Oftentimes in the high end of pH, we've got way too much calcium or way too much magnesium or way too much sodium. That's going to bring that pH up. And then if you notice on soil tests by grid soil sampling in small increments out in fields, like one acre grids to determine where pH is at, now you can see, okay, I've got a problem in this area of the field. Now we may look even further to see if we've also got a drainage issue. All right, so Darren mentioned calcium, magnesium, and sodium. What he did not mention was salt. Those are the four things that we will commonly talk to people about in terms of high pH. So first of all, when you have sodium in the soil, that can raise soil pH roughly four to one compared to calcium. So sodium is a big deal, that's really number one. Magnesium can raise soil pH roughly 1.6 to one compared to calcium. So sodium and magnesium are much more worrisome for us than just straight out calcium. So let's say that, for example, you've got this high pH. Let's say it's seven and a half or eight, eight and a half. We want to see a complete soil test. So we do need the calcium, the magnesium, the sodium. We want to see soluble salts. We want to see base saturation. We want to see everything we possibly can. That's going to give us the best indication of what's truly raising your pH. Most of the time when we find pH is rising in soils, and we've talked to so many farmers who have soil test data going back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, or even more, and they see this gradual rise in soil pH, it's due to poor drainage. And when you look at things like soluble salts, and Brian mentioned sodium, when we don't have drainage, I mean, just the word alone, soluble salts, it's in the water solution in the soil, it's going to move. But if it can't get out the bottom because we've got a drainage issue in the field, salts are going to build up in that field and it's going to raise your pH. So the first thing you have to do if you want to fix that high pH is you've got to have great drainage. A lot of times that means in a heavy soil, you're putting in drain tile. Once you have that drain tile in and your drainage is set, now we can start addressing the problems. And typically what we need to address the problems, if it's magnesium or let's say it's sodium, a lot of times people are throwing more sulfur out there. If you put out gypsum, for example, a lot of people will ask us about gypsum. Well, that's calcium sulfate. You're adding calcium to the soil if you need it, and you're adding sulfate to that soil. The sulfate can bind with either the magnesium or the sodium to form a salt. The point is, again, like Darren said, salts are leachable. So we can immediately flush out soluble salts when drainage is improved. When we turn sodium and magnesium into salts with sulfate, then those are leachable as well, and we can flush those out of a soil. Now, one thing here I want to make very clear, Brian said improving drainage out in that field, I'm not talking about surface drainage. You could make some channels through the field and get surface water to run off a little bit faster, but this isn't what I'm talking about or what Brian's talking about here because these salts are going to build up on the soil surface. Even with surface drainage, you're still going to see those salts getting pushed up in poorly drained soils and you're still going to have that high pH problem. Darren and I do talk a lot about elemental sulfur as well. That is a way that you can quickly lower soil pH. But just understand, the way that elemental sulfur lowers that pH is there's a bacteria in the soil that will convert the elemental sulfur over to sulfate. When that conversion happens, there's sulfuric acid that's created. There's acid created that's lowering the pH. But you're not going to convert it over to hydrogen sulfate, which is sulfuric acid, without that bacteria. The only way that bacteria will be there is if you have good drainage. 
So don't put elemental sulfur out if you haven't first fixed the drainage problem. Your soil is going to smell like rotten eggs. You're going to turn that sulfur into hydrogen sulfide, and that's a bad thing for your soil without good drainage. So have the drainage taken care of first, then you can use elemental sulfur. Now how much do you need? No one on the planet knows that. There are universities that have put out charts. We found them all to be wrong. I'll just say this, start with some elemental sulfur, try Try some lower rates, 100 pounds, 200 pounds, 300 pounds, something like that. See what happens and go from there. The heavier the soil, the more elemental sulfur you will need to lower that pH quickly. And the other thing that you're looking for is elemental sulfur that has a very small particle size. We need that elemental sulfur to break down very, very quickly. So if you have good drainage and you have that small particle size, you can get a fairly fast pH change. We've been able to lower soil pH on our farm from eight and a half to six and a half in just a couple of years through the use of elemental sulfur after drainage gets fixed. Now with all this, like Brian mentioned, nobody really understands this elemental sulfur all the way that, hey, you have to put on exactly this many pounds and it's gonna give you this exact difference in your soil. So take one field or part of a field and try it on a small scale on your farm and learn. And then you can take those lessons you learned from your farm with your climate and your soils to expand to the rest of your farm to fix those high pH areas. You may have heard people say, oh, you can't fix a high pH soil. That's nonsense. Don't listen to those people. They don't know what they're talking about. Fix your drainage issue. Make sure you're looking real hard at your calcium, magnesium, sodium, and soluble salt levels. And yes, it's going to take some time. And you may need to put some elemental sulfur or some other form of sulfur out there, maybe some gypsum. It just depends on what your soil test looks like. The other thing you may notice in some of these high pH spots in your fields are certain weeds, like maybe even our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 